What's up, everybody? Um, today I'd like to talk about the difference between uh, hitting the yards with graffiti, like subway yards, like the D yard up at 205th, or Coney Island, or Shea Stadium, they had one out there. I never really fucked with that one, but compared to hitting layups and tunnels, or even things that are considered underground yards, these things exist as well, like the A's up there, 175th. Grant was very similar to that on the A's also. Fours too. It's kind of like undergroundish. Three yard also. It's kind of undergroundish. It's out. It's at ground level, but like under a building type thing. So <clears throat> also I'd like to say thank you everyone for your you know loving support and concern about my well being. Uh, with this whole, you know, you could probably hear my voice, I'm still a little sick, but I'm going to be alright. I was looking up a respiratory uh, uh, pneumonia. I pretty much checked it off as pneumonia. Uh, I asked him, I said, but why would I not be able to smell? And I said, well, no, any stuffiness and obstruction of your uh, respiratory areas could cause something like that. Your mouth, with your taste buds, and your, your nose when you're smelling and stuff like that gets affected, I'm like, yeah, but I spray it, spray it, and I have smell it. I say, no, that's normal. Like, if anyone gets any type of leper situation, they're not going to be able to smell anything. I'm like, well, why the hell do they blast in this shit through this whole pandemic? Like, if you can't smell nothing, this there. You know, you're going to fucking get the COVID or something. Like, I, uh, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for the support, people. You guys are cool, man. No, that was very nice. It, it touched me. I, 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 um, I feel appreciated. That's nice. Thank you. Uh, let's get back to this. Like, for instance, we're going to go to the D Yard. This is funny. The D Yard at 205th Street. I remember I used to, there's times. I mean, I knew how to get, I could, I'm going to break it down to you about five different ways to get into that place. But one way is you get off the 4 train up there at the stop that's right there near the D train. Now, when you're exiting the outdoor station, there's a little window. Right before you go down the stairs, or when you're going up the stairs to actually pay your fare at the token booth, there's a little window there. You open that window, and it's like trees and bushes and shit, and there's actually grass right there, and like sticks and shit. And about two feet, three feet, it's a fence, double fence, bar wire and shit like that. I used to climb into that fucking window, up that little fence, and the holes in the fence towards the mid-80s was changed to like real small little tight little links. It's not like you can pick a sneaker in it and run right up it. Then on top, it was all just spiraled out with fucking barbed wire. Every so often, someone would go through the window. You know, it's just a regular little window that opens like this, like a bathroom window or something. And most of the time, someone would go in the window and to the left. They'd always cut a hole in the fence and then cut another hole in the fence. So you could go right into the yard, right to the left. And then what this person would do, it wasn't me, that's what I'm saying, this person. I have no idea who it was. Maybe it was multiple people. I don't know. But <clears throat> they would then take a hanger, a wire hanger that you would get from the cleaners. That you'd get your shirt pressed and cleaned up. A wire hanger, like what they would perform an abortion with back in the days. A wire hanger. An illegal abortion, rather. Um, they would take that and they'd wind it through the fence, almost like stitching up a cut. And they'd pull it real tight and then they'd twist it together to cover the hole. And then I guess whenever they come back, they'd undo it, go in there and close it back up again. But <clears throat> that was one way of getting in there. This is up in the Bronx, 205th Street on the D train. Then you had another way where it's like right where the 4 train goes. And it's about straight. There's one point where you got the D yard here. And you got a pole to the tracks of the 4 train here. Then you got another pole to the 4 train tracks right here. This one's in the yard. This one's in the street. So I'd climb up this one in the street. Go across the tracks. And climb down the one into the yard. It was in the yard. I've also actually jumped off of the bridge. It's a little bridge of traffic that goes over that yard. I jumped off that bridge and landed on a D train and went right in graffiti. <clears throat> now, in doing that, it's more like a hand drop. 
I'm six foot four, three quarters of an inch. I hang drop off that thing. It's about 15 feet to the top of that train. So I go like this. I'm talking what? Eight feet maybe from my fingers down. So you figure eight feet. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's only like I'm really free falling like seven feet. It's not that big a deal. But I can't get back up that way. I have to figure out another way to get out. Sometimes I walk right out the main fucking entrance. I mean, fuck. But the whole tricky thing is with these ways of getting into that place, it was perfect for what I did, for the kind of graffiti I did. Because I would only require a few cans of ink like this. Now, if I had like a knapsack full of paint or something to do fill-ins, I'd be fucked, you know? <clears throat> so, pretty much these cans of ink, two, three of them, if I'm having an army coat, I'd fit one in each pocket, actually. If I'm hitting a, a yard, yeah, take about four cans of me, you know? Get over 100 cars, almost 200 cars with something like that, with four of those things of ink. Sparsely, yeah. You know, if you're going heavy, heavy, heavy with them, well, I've killed fucking six trains up at Zurega, Castle Hill, Middletown Road, Fallon Bay, the whole nine yards, all the way up. And I could dump out two cans of this marsh ink, it's about this big, on 70 cars. And that's not sparingly. That's like, like just going off and not conserving and shit like that. And, Hitting a lot of tags in every car, 25, 30 tags in a car. The average human being would go through four or five tags in each car. And where they could probably use one of those cans to get the 60 or 70 cars. Me, I put a little extra in there. You know, I, I, fucking, I kept going up there, bumping into my shit over and over and over again. I mean, it's not like pieces or burners or any wild style, it's just a tag. So I figured, fuck, you know, just go apes, you know, yard, 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 Take more time on each car rather than more cars because I already pretty much had them all. But getting back to this D yard thing. <clears throat> now, I go climbing around there going through all this bullshit just to get in there. I get 80, 90 cars depending, but it was good because you could get CC flats, you could also get the Ds, you could find all types of shit in there, God knows. A's, B's, and everything is all switches around. But yeah, especially the late 80s when the B started running up along the D line. Yeah, and then that shit would go out to Coney Island. God knows where your shit would wind up. But yeah, they used to have that <clears throat> D yard. But what I would prefer over the D yard would be the D tunnels. I would, like, I would start at like 155th on the D train. I'd go on the D train. You know, 155th Street stop in the Bronx. I get off. I have all my little bottles of ink and shit. I jump in the tunnel there, and I swear I'd hop right in the fucking tunnel there, and I could go for fucking like miles. Honestly, I could keep going all the way to 205th Street. From 155th to 205th Street, I could get straight through because all the token boots and shit are upstairs. You know, when you're going through, I mean, even if there's someone on the platform, because I would do that shit up. If I'm not going out, Sunday morning, in the winter, this would be in the winter. The summer, they didn't really rock like this. Sometimes in the summer, too. Floods, hurricanes, shit like that. But <clears throat> this is in the winter. But I knew how to spread it out where I would hit this line in the winter because it was better. And I hit this thing in the summer because of this and that. So in the winter, I would hit these D's like that. And I swear, from 155th to 161, through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, right up to 205th Street. I couldn't even begin that. It's more than the sixes with Zariga Castle Hill and shit. You're probably talking 100 cars. You're probably talking more than 10 sets if you're just running straight up. I mean, them things were like dispatchable. They were all over the fucking place, those big fucking D trains and shit. They were using them things for everything. And they were also buffing them pretty heavy. You never really bumped into one of them that was completely bombed. At least towards the mid-80s. 85, 86, they started really cleaning them a lot. And then this guy, Easy e he started getting them a lot. With Trim, KD, started getting them a lot. Um, has, he has. Well, he was getting them from the jump. Uh, Dynamite 149 was from the jump. That was a CC flat, so his shit just lasted. Um, yeah. 
a lot of people are putting in work on them things, but I just think that they do a bunch of them, and they were just cleaning them real quick. They had a good system to clean them things on that line. But you would see these people would hit them with the, um, the supermarketing, the garbage supermarketing. You know what had them fucking things I'd probably say the best? Would probably be, even before them and even during them, crook. Crook. K-R-O-O-K. -O -O crook. And bet. Roaches rest in peace. Um, soon. Moon. Uh, trike. You know? uh, shit. But yeah, I would probably have to say crook in them. Bef and even before that and during that time, Lee 3 was another one that was coming out with um, he also wrote Rose, Lee Three Rose, Chinese dude, kind of heavy set, good guy. Um, Ren, Renard, my man Renard, KGB, Renegade, Ren. That's KGB from the subway era, not KGB from the Bronx. Talking about a different KGB with abuse. Yeah, good dudes, man. Um, a lot of fucking people were tearing them things up, man. Note had a lot. Um, uh, Spicer, there was this guy Spicer that was hitting those a lot. And of course the RTW guys. Bo, Bo had them fucking things smashed. Rich had that shit smashed. But nah, Min RTW once again had that shit smashed. Yeah, he was always getting them fucking things. He always got those in the float, the fillings. Yeah, Min was like a, a lot of this shit. I keep saying, like, his name is going to keep coming up because, yo, he was that dude, man. You know, he falls under a lot of different categories. He really rocked. Um, FN, he had a lot of floaters, uh, a lot of fill-ins. FN, FR, Frankie Goes Hollywood, Top Crew, Sane. Um, uh, yeah, Sane was Top Crew also. Then you had the whole hot crew. Uh, Go for Dusk, uh, Pace, which was PC357. Um... Wow, there was a lot of them. Then you have RFA ready for action. Now those boys was out there well, and girls. This was Ladybug RFA, which was a chick. But they were acting. They were kicking out. When I was kicking out, you know, RFA, yeah, they were the putting it in. You had Ladybug. They all they did the same style shit. Real good shit, man. Good guys. Um, who else do you have out there? Um, cost. Cost KRT and Doc KRT with destroying insides and fillings. They had a lot at one point, man. They had a fucking lot. Pace, um, Pace also, once again, Hot Crew Pace was bombing with this dude, Des, D E S, and Pate, P A T E, and Sash, Gary Sash, my Sash, uh, 357 Sash. Yeah, um, those guys were putting it in on those lines. A lot of what happens with them is a lot of that shit would also come from the winter layups on the double R's. From like City Hall to like Fifth Avenue. It's like boom, 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 boom. Just like I said, the, I preferred the D's up in the Bronx because it was more quiet, especially on a Sunday morning. You wouldn't have nobody up there. Man. You could go up there and just think, nice and quiet, and just go through it. And, you know, when you're going from one door train to the next, they were all open. All these doors were open. Now, and also, a little sardine key really doesn't work for this. I've done it, but it takes too long. It's just, it's not time efficient. It's, it's worthless. Um, you know, you can still fiddle around with it, but the sardine key thing, when I tell you, you take the key from the sardine can, you bend it down on the IRTs, and you go, bing, it works. Not on these things. These things are shaped like a lightning bolt. But they were all open anyway, so you were good. I don't think I ever, ever, ever went to any of them places and them doors were locked. I, don't, I can't think of one time, and I've been through all of them motherfucking places. I used to hit the fucking A's under, um, oh, what the fuck is it again? The Museum of Natural History, 81st Street, shit like that. They have a little plunger there, they park a whole fuckload of them right in there. Not a whole fuckload, on an average, two, three cents, 20, 30 cars. You see, um, you would have a lot of shit laying around there that you could pick at. That's why it was, it was good. It was good. I personally preferred tunnels over yards. And it's just like what yards are cool, but I could never understand why someone would want to go in a train yard. 
a subway yard, I guess unless it's like right next to their house or something, it's the closest thing to them. But I can never figure out why someone would want to go there and just do a piece. I guess because you maybe you got more room or something. I don't know. I personally, I don't know. I never did a piece like a Wild Style Burner a day in my life on the subway. I've done top to bottoms. I've done whole car blockbusters. Big bubble letters also I would do. But I never did actually sat there and did a piece on the subway. I, I never did that. My friend Lakes, L-A-C-E-357, not Pace, Lakes. He did an RD piece once with Ghost on a, I think a Franklin Avenue shuttle train or something. I never did one. But I can never understand like why someone would rather be outside, maybe because of the fumes. But I would think in a tunnel it would be nicer, you know, but maybe it's darker in the tunnel. You know, it's something I can't speak on. But as far as it goes with tearing shit up, I could get just as many D train that's underground. From fucking like 153rd, 155th, all that shit, all the way up to 205th. I could get more D trains or just the same amount as I would if I went in the fucking yard. And the yard, I always had to climb in and do some crazy shit, man, sneaking through people's backyards and shit. They say I just hopped in, so I was content with that. But then again, I still yearned. I don't know if I'd say yearned, but I guess I still like to fuck around, so I go climb in the yard anyway and do some stupid shit every so often. Never, ever, ever have I had a problem up there in that yard, in the D-yard, 205th. Yeah, never have I uh, You got a lot of different things. That I've never had a... Uh, I've actually never really had a problem in any of them places at all. I don't even think I ever bumped into a human beings. Well, no, I bumped into people. I bumped into other writers and stuff, but yeah, it's always been easy peasy. You know, I, I was just good with my timing. I knew when to get there, you know. I knew when to get out of there. I knew what to look for. I knew what to smell for. You know. It all worked out well. But yeah, so I guess it would go in a, in a t order of this. I preferred the tunnels. Like I said, the winter layup tunnels, where there's multiple trains that they keep to warm up during the winter. Because they put them in the yard, they're not going to work as some crazy shit. So they put them in the tunnels to keep them nice and warm, so they can pull them right out at rush hour. I like that situation. You can get a lot of them, just as long as you're quiet. Like I said, I'd go right through the station and everything. I'd even see people on the platform, like waiting for a train. I'd just open that door so quietly, and I'd go through so quietly. You know? And that would be it. To the next car, the next car. And then before you know it, I'm back in the next tunnel. I would do this shit for like six, seven train stops. For real. Pace people. There's a lot with me. But then again, once again, it's not scripted. So I was, I clicked this thing off and I'm like, yo, I forgot so many fucking dudes that were hitting that shit. Like CAC crew, uh, Dole CAC, that dude was tearing them fucking things up. Man, Mesk is another one that was tearing them fucking things up. Mesk. Um, then you had these, um, AI, uh, KSW, a lot of them, a, a ZI, a Zane, another one that was going in hard on that shit. Then you had Chrysler, Mad Max, you had TPW, the party writer, you had, um, it's funny, as soon as I click this thing off, it's like, oh shit. Um, yeah, nah, man, Conan, SS, Chick, uh, all of those females, um, So many different fucking writers, man. Uh, Sassoon, I don't know if I mentioned that before. Sassoon was another one that was writing a lot. Uh, I know once I click this thing off, I'm like, oh shit, you know? But yeah, during my time, I, like the double R's, I kind of am bunching it all together because I'm a Manhattan dude uh, from the IRTs to sixes. So I kind of look at the D's, the B's, the this. Fucking the A's, the R's, the R R's, the C's, the E's, the F's, it's all one fucking thing. Yeah, I'm weird like that. Because honestly, I hit one thing one place and it winds up in a whole different line. It wind up, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, you had a lot of 70s dudes, mad work, man. Put a lot of fucking work on them insides. Little Star, LS, yeah, I did a lot. All them 70s dudes. Uh, Rip 70s, good dude, man, good guy. Um, yeah, 70S put it in a lot. And you know, a lot of these TNS guys, too, they were putting it in a lot, too. At that point, they were starting to kind of fade out a little bit, but yeah, definitely got to mention them. Um, 
So many different people, man. So many different fucking people. Because I'm trying to get on the letter lines. Like I said, I really didn't pay attention much to that shit. I was more on the IRTs. I just went to the letter lines because the IRTs got burnt. And I had friends that knew these places. I'd say my number one resource to these layups would be, um, other than Astoria Cats with the Astoria layup, would probably be Nash, OA. Yeah, he showed me a lot of different crazy layups. He brought me to Grant Hall, see all types of fucking weird places. Half the time I didn't even know where I was when Nash brought me there. Uh, like out Linden Boulevard, all types of weird shit. But yeah, um, Nash is another one that put in a lot of work. Yeah, Nash OA. He had a lot of fill-ins and he had a lot of tags and shit on insides. Form also had a lot of tags on the insides. And yeah, Ken. Ken, three, five, seven, Rost, my man Rost, he hit a lot of insides and outsides. Rost, he also wrote Sack, he was down with me, three, five, seven. Um, then you had TA7, towards the very end, they were putting in work. Then you had like, um, Merck, EK, Rank, and uh, I know there's another one of them guys, I'm forgetting, EK, Rank, Merck, um, I know there's a third guy. But yeah, those guys were putting it in for a hot minute. Yeah, they were out there. A couple of years, they got in good. Um, uh, Spider is another one. Hash, uh, TNC Crow. I remember seeing them up a lot on those lines. Um, Trike, I think I mentioned him before. Trike was up a lot. I do Trike a lot, man. <clears throat> I was actually shocked. He, on my Instagram, Trike, he mentioned to me, you know, I've been looking at your videos, man, I like them and shit, you know. Like, uh, that means a lot to me, man. That dude was like a fucking monster on them things. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Fort Hamilton Yard, uh, lay up down there and shit. I've been there once. Yeah. Um, who else is up a lot? Uh, LO and fucking guys, man. So many different dudes. Uh, um, what the fuck, uh, B.O. Bond, um, Ross, he was TPA, I believe, um, drug crew, yeah, all that drug crew, uh, yeah, Ro, R.O., another good guy, bombed a lot, put in a lot of fucking work, Mesk, also, I probably said him, then, of course, like, these guys, sad, I actually heard that they kind of passed away in sequence, but, um, yeah, you had Sess. And you had Big T, you know, both of those guys passed away. Crook's still alive. Hey, Crook's name comes up again. Crook fucking really, really put in a lot of fucking work. When it comes to them fucking lighter lines, man, Crook had that shit smashed. I used to wonder who he was. I met him later on in life after the trains died out and everything. And he actually saw me, uh, I don't know, doing a truck or something for my man, a turkey. That's the second legal thing I said that I've done as far as it goes. But I found a third one, actually, when I was saying I only did two legal spots in my life. I'm sorry, that's not true. I had done three legal spots in my life. Uh, that truck, when I met Crook, you know, like in 90 or something like that, my man Turkey owned it. He had a rank of We called him Turkey because he was from Turkey. He died. He died, and his brother died. Um, they're both dead. Uh, but that's how I met Crook, sitting out there doing that right there at 60-something Street, 2nd Avenue. Um, the other legal thing that I did, like I said, was the wall at Sweet Chicks out there in Brooklyn from my man John Seymour, a good friend of mine since childhood. But the one that I forgot to mention was the one I did out in Brooklyn recently. Uh, Skid and OJ took me out there, this, guy, um, this place out in Brooklyn. I don't know, it, it was good. I really had a good time. I got to meet that guy to write St. TMR. Good guy, good guy. Um, Cy was also there, TMR, Cy, nice guy, very good guy. Um, I don't want to pronounce it, uh, Hocus or Hocus, or, um, I believe Hocus is what it said. Uh, and then I did an RD at the end of Blockbuster, things breaking out. And it's funny because I just did a thing, and I was saying how I only did two legal things. And shortly after, I like, I'm on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, shit, that's right. I forgot to link it, someone posted a picture. You know, not that they're blowing me up or anything, they just had a picture of an OID. I'm like, oh shit, that's right, that was done legal. So now here I am, confronting you. Like, yes, that's also legal, of course. It's like that whole Bushwick type deal almost, you know. 
I had fun doing that. I met some real interesting people, and I like that guy Saint TMR. They're good, man. Them TMR dudes, man, they ain't never take no shit. Uh, throughout my life, when I was fucking around with them, we used to have a lot of beef. Uh, they were good dudes, man. They, they, they ain't fight. When I mean good dudes, I mean they were not cowardly, man. Them dudes would come after us, you know. Like, we'd go out to their neighborhood, they'd come to our neighborhood and shit. Yeah, they're good dudes, man. They, they definitely ain't fucking ain't take no shit. Peace, people. I'm not watching them click back on And I remember someone. No, I ain't gonna do that. But, you know, at my, I just am talking. I'm not scripting anything. So I might keep going. I, I love to talk, so this whole platform is perfect for me. Shit, you aim a camera at me, I'm like, meh, 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 meh. I'll go on and on and on. Man. Peace, people. Thanks again for all the kind words about my, uh, how I was feeling under the weather. Look at my nose, man. Look at that shit. That's from fucking scratching like on it. You see it? I was blowing my nose so fucking much that shit got raw. It looks like I went on a fucking coke binge or something.